Hi and welcome to uh, to my garage. This is where my uh, my new single seater is resting at the moment, waiting to be uh, gone over with a set of spanners and various bits and pieces and tools to make sure it's all safe to drive. Um, it's a um, Miguel 1.6 turbo EcoBoost Formula Ford, um, and it was run by the Radical team. They have two cars. Um, this is the car driven by James Abbott, and the sister car. Uh, the white car has been bought by Pete Gording and he's um, he's also intending to sprint it the same as me and possibly hill climb it. So between us we've got uh, quite a bit of work to do to learn about the cars and uh, to get them ready for the uh, for either the end of this season or some testing over the winter and then a full attack on next year's season. So I'll go over briefly um, some details about the car. Um, we have a 1.6 Ford EcoBoost which is turbocharged and produces 200 horsepower. Um, the turbo it looks pretty big when you take it off it's actually got some very very tiny little blades inside it but it's um it's small so it spins up very quickly uh, and uh, obviously it's uh, it's the right size for the engine because it's making 200 horsepower um you'll notice at the back of the car we've got a hewland six speed sequential gearbox that's this guy just here um with the suspension obviously connected to the gearbox which is how single seaters are um, they're designed on the back of the gearbox you can see there's an alternator which is driven off the drive shaft um, so the battery is only charged when the car is, is moving forwards it's a rather nice suspension some lovely hubs as well these are made by i believe they're made by miguel and they've got uh, ap racing calipers on them um, they've also got tethers on them you can see just here there's a tether so if you have an accident um, each corner the suspension's tethered to the actual gearbox or the chassis so that the, uh, the wheel doesn't come away from the car and injure anybody. This car's got some very nice Intrax dampers on the rear. There's a pair of them. Both are obviously adjustable with these little adjusters on the top, connected with a hydraulic hose to the actual damper unit itself. Um, and the rear anti-roll bar is this device just here, which is on the top of the um, this section just here. So as the shock absorbers apply tension to the anti-roll bar, it obviously twists, and then that's how you can and just the amount of roll that the car's got. And moving forwards, we've got the air box, which is this device here with the gold reflective tape on it. And there's a couple of Samco hoses joined together, which feed the air into the inlet on the turbo. We've also got the fuel filler cap. I believe that's a transponder beacon unit for, for PIP2 um, car communications. Not quite sure yet, still a lot to learn. Um, Battery isolator, it's all electronic on this car and with a little push switch there's one on the other side and we've got a pull cable for the fire extinguisher. Quite thick panels, also pretty heavy so we're going to look at um, getting some lighter ones made for it to uh, make the car a little bit more competitive. See it's got James's name on the side still. I'm going to leave it with the stickers on it because um, I think it's important that it remains how it came out of the factory. I don't want to start um, changing the stickers on it just at the moment. Inside the car we've got uh, an FIA recovery seat which lifts right out um, and uh, we've also got a fairly basic um, cockpit arrangement here. What we do have is um, a very small control panel here. We've got a little blue switch which if I press the red light comes on. There it is, didn't press it properly. The ignition's now on and what you've got access to here is a little screen on the dashboard which shows you inf information about the engine and the timing and what gear you're in or temperature or temperature etc and it's got four screens so as you're driving along you can actually select a different screen to get a different view of the data coming from the engine management system also down here on this switch panel we've got a rain light so if I flick it on and look out the back of the car you'll now see that the garage door is illuminated turn that off on again off again that's the rain light. We don't need those for sprinting, but I'll leave it on the car anyway. Above that, we've then got the ignition switch and, of course, the most important button of all, the starter motor button. So I'll just turn the power back off again, press the button, off it goes. Battery's on the floor. And uh, there's the isolator. Also got a rather large fire extinguisher. This is the gear selection just here. And it moves this Bowden cable, which goes to the gearbox it's sequential uh, so you don't need to use the clutch other than first gear and it automatically blips the throttle for you on the down change 
And the way it does that is because this car is drive-by wire. It's actually got a potentiometer, which is speed battery the suspension, which sits on the throttle pedal just here. And as you move the throttle pedal, the signal changes, and the ECU operates a servo that um, is connected to the throttle, so it's all fully automatic, throttle position, etc. It's quite good, useful because when you start the car and the engine's cold, the uh, ECU automatically applies more throttle to help the engine tick over more smoothly until the engine's warmed up. So at the front, same arrangement, we've got these Intrax dampers with remote reservoirs. Um, we've got again some very nice hubs. Um, and again we've got wheel tethers. Um, we've also got wheel speed sensors, there's one on each wheel, uh, which the ECU is constantly recording the wheel speed. That would be useful for uh, traction and launch control um, at a later stage. It's sitting on some very nice 13 inch alloy wheels, they're not magnesium unfortunately, they're alloy, so they're quite strong but they're also quite heavy, so we need to look at replacing those with some wider, wider wheels and tyres. Front wing's made of carbon fibre, most parts of this are car carbon fibre of course, um, which unfortunately puts the cost up, although of course they're a lot lighter to, uh, to move around in the, uh, in the air. So just feed that through again. An accelerator and a very nice um, pedal box assembly on the floor. We've also got a couple of transducers here for the brake pressure. These also go to the ECU, uh, and we've also got there's a blue potentiometer down here just on the bottom of the steering rack. And as you turn the steering wheel, the steering angle is also recorded by the ECU. So there's a lot going on. There's an awful lot going on. A lot being recorded. There's nowhere to hide. Um, but whether you've got the patience to analyse that amount of detail or not remains to be seen. Um, I seldom do, I just like getting in and driving it as fast as I can. Um, so overall it's a nice package, it's, um, it's a, quite a good looking car, aerodynamically it should be fairly quick. We've got some rooms um, to improve things, now, like I said before the, the panels are quite big and heavy, they need to be um, filled and replaced by some lightweight carbon fibre ones, but for now it's a case of going across the car with a spanner, making sure everything's safe, um, checking the wiring, um, checking the engine and gearbox, making sure that everything's going to be reliable, and, uh, and then go and have some fun in it. Looking forward to it.